Guess which ability mods they get. Plus two to strength, plus one to charisma. Oh, hey. nice. There we go. Yeah, it's kind of perfect. Um, to help for with a the paladin. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, no, no, no. We're, that's what we're talking about. This doesn't exist right now. Pala, what? <laughs> Never heard of him. I go barbarian sorcerer. Welcome to Monsters and Monster Class, your Dungeons and Dragons fix. I'm Kevin Ody. I'm Jared Bornigal. And I'm Will Melden. And we'll be hanging out with you for a while to talk about anything and everything D&D related. On this episode, we are taking a look at the Barbarian Sorcerer Multiclass. We are at the, the, the tail end of all of our multiclasses. This is the crap we're left with. We did a lot of them randomly. It's, I don't know how this I happened. know. We did. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and also, this is not like a good way to entice people to stay and listen. There's going to be some interesting talking points. It's, I don't... I don't think it is as bad and as of a meme multi-class as it initially sounds, so stick around and find out why. So, the Barbarian Sorcerer multi-class. For Barbarians, we've got our martial focus class. Uh, They are the big brutes. Their rage is their main class mechanic, which allows them to take half damage to most physical damage and then uh, do some extra damage as long as they're using melee attacks. Strength-based melee attacks, specifically. And then we have the Sorcerer. Takes 13 Charisma to multiclass in and out of. And it is the full caster, the manipulator spellcaster. Manipulator of spells, that is, not socially. Though I guess they're, they could be. Uh, but they are very focused on spell casting and what can you not do while raging everybody read <laughs> Sp- <laughs> say speed you might be able to read read I said read read okay officially you can read while raging but you cannot cast spells nor can you concentrate on spells so that will right. be extremely important as we go through this episode definitely a multi class where we're going to be working around some heavy limitations but Hopefully, there's something that we can make out of it. Uh, Maybe some flavorful options as well. Let's hear some first thoughts from Kevin. What do you got? So I I think this is going to be a similar conversation to our Barbarian Wizard episode, which, if you recall, we walked away from saying, okay, I know this is like the joke about like bad multiclasses. Like, oh, you can multiclass anything, even Barbarian Wizard, but why would anyone do that? And it's kind of in that same vein, but again, it's there's ways to salvage it. It's not going to be amazing. Like, if this is not going to be like the next broken build we're going to discover here or anything like that, but I I don't think it's just completely worthless on all fronts, no matter what you do. Okay. And Will, how are you feeling? This is by far the worst multi class we've ever covered. And I'm not just exaggerating, (laughs) keep ramping up our content. (laughs) <laughs> yeah well one of the things that i find he different that he did say that recently it's yeah. and it's going to be said again probably on the next episode uh but one of the things that's much more difficult than the wizard sorcerer is that the saving grace of the wizard barbarian multi-class was that wizards get a lot at first level they get six known spells they get ritual casting uh, they get a class feature at second level i believe that a lot of them had Maybe not overlap with the Barbarian, but would be pretty useful stuff. The Sorcerer at first level gets two cantrips and two spells known. That is In their first Sorcerer's Origin ability. Right. Which some of them, I guess we'll we'll be talking about, I'm sure, at length. But there's not going to be a ton of options here in, in ones that are actually worthwhile. And as for ones that add benefit to the Barbarian... I think we're looking at one, uh, which I guess is a good enough place to start. The clockwork origin for sorcerer is like a, it's a, a subclass that, or what does it give you? I should probably have that up right before I start talking. The restore balance feature, which allows you to either negate disadvantage or advantage using your reaction. That's something that you can do while raging. It's not casting a spell. It's not concentrating on anything. Beyond that, for the sorcerer abilities, like first level stuff, I don't really think there's much of any overlap. Uh, wild magic gets Tad's chaos, give themselves advantage. 
sure, which is good for one thing, but then you need to cast a spell in order to unleash that magic, I believe. Yeah, so you could give yourself advantage and then you could do that once per long rest or the next time you roll on the wild magic surge table, that'll come back and the DM could just kind of make you do it if you've recently used Tides Chaos. Um, it specifically says anytime before you regain the use of this feature, the DM can have you roll on the wild magic surge table immediately after you cast a sorcerer spell. Yes. So that's like the one stipulation. So it's like, even if you use tides of chaos, it's like, it's not going to come back until you're able to cast a spell, which isn't going to happen until you're not raging anymore. Sure. Yeah. And so it's like, it may be a once per battle thing. So yeah, you're not going to be getting tides of chaos multiple times in a fight. But that's rarely the case anyways. Um, but I think you can get them multiple times a day. Okay. Because you'll cast spells outside of it. Same with the Barbarian Wizard. I think the main play is either you cast a spell the very, very first round. Maybe it's an AoE of some kind um, to do initial damage and then you rage. Or you cast a non-concentration spell. Like I know it's a higher level one like Fire Shield or something. Um or this does give you, if you go Divine Soul, access to Cleric one, so you can do like spiritual weapon mm. and things like that. The first round and rage, and then you have that up. Alternatively, you save your spell casting for 100% out of combat utility, which barbarians are kind of infamous for lacking. So are sorcerers. Looking at their spell list, yeah. you've got barely any out of combat utility and even their in combat utility you're usually looking at concentration spells at the low levels i mean if we're talking about mostly going into sorcerer sure after a while you're going to open up to your spell options but i don't think i could recommend a heavy uh build into sorcerer and then a small dip into barbarian there's very little reason to do that just a way to become a gish the melee spellcaster but like the worst type of gish. I mean, there's so many <laughs> other ways that you can do that. And even like the flavor, I feel like you can get from it. I mean, Barbarian's main flavor is that they they rage. They, you can spin that rage in whatever fashion that you want. But, oh my gosh, just go Paladin. If you're trying to, to have any type of gish and, I don't know, have, have your oath be like when you think about your oath, you get real mad and you start smiting. At least then you're getting right. something out of it. Wait, well, yes, of course there are better options, but we're not talking about better options. I know. I'm Everyone saying, knows Sorcerer Paladin's like, yes, great. Yes. I guess what I'm saying is that if you try to do mostly Sorcerer and then every once in a while you have the Barbarian Rage stuff, it's going to be very difficult to have stats that are worthwhile to make melee an actual option because you have to get Barbarian at least up to level five to get two attacks even. So maybe right. you're just doing your Booming Blades or your Green Flame Blades, which the Sorcerer does have access to, but mm -hmm. you can't do that while raging. So right, yeah. even if you are trying to be a Barbarian that's using those Skag Trips, it's not going to be as good as just, I don't know, I, I, literally nothing. It's, it's just not good. <laughs> right. So I the only way I can see this working from a like, okay, your class is, is all right, is if you're mostly barbarian and then you take a dip in the sorcerer for a couple of spells here and there and it all falls to that what you mentioned earlier like that first turn where it takes your bonus action to rage so you usually have your action free if you're close enough that's probably going to be a melee attack because you can rage before you attack but if you aren't close enough then the sorcerer gives you a lot of ranged options mm-hmm um, now, as for, like, really, really low-level dips, the only first-level spells that fall under this criteria of not concentration and, um, I guess that, just not concentration that'll actually provide long-lasting benefit are Sleep, Jump, and Mage Armor. And Mage Armor kind of goes out immediately because you're a barbarian right. and you have other ways of getting armor. Sleep is good at low levels, and Jump is super situational. Right, yeah. Their spell list is not conducive to this. Like the wizard, I know we were like, oh, I guess there's a couple of spells here and there that are actually going to be worthwhile. But you did mention the, uh, which one was that? Which blood Divine was that? Soul. Divine Soul. Legion I think you were onto something with that. Spells. 
Uh, well, a lot of them are also concentration. Um, but there's at least spiritual weapon, which you have to get to at least third level ooh. in Sorcerer 4, but that would be kind of worthwhile. But it's a bonus right. action to cast that in the first place, though, isn't it? It is, yes. That makes things difficult. Right, because it's also a bonus action to rage. Hmm. So it's tricky. Yeah, at first level for any either option, there's not a lot with first level spells. Then you get to second, and there's like blindness, deafness, spiritual weapon. Um, I know there's more. I'm blanking on them. Aid, which is not anything crazy, but we have had had use of that in our yeah campaign. I, th- I think if this is a if this is a campaign that only goes up to like level eight or something, and you do five barbarian, three sorcerer, I feel like you're going to get some use out of the sorcerer levels and spells. Like the it doesn't matter if your charisma is only. 14 or 16 like some things are going to hit some things are going to miss it's not going to be crazy damage but it offers you some options from for the barbarian that you wouldn't have otherwise but if this was like a level 15 campaign those three levels of sorcerer are going to feel like a total waste yeah i can see that um I don't say kind of the opposite. We're at higher levels. I could see this coming online a bit more. If I'm not not exactly ten to ten, but if you're kind of in that vein, um, because then you are getting higher level spells, which do have more situational uses, more out of combat stuff will start coming online than just what you get from first level spells. Which you're right is not much. More spell slots to play around with. Yeah, you would not be as competent in melee. But also then at that point, you have your extra attack. You can maximize your strength. And then after fifth level and having 20 strength, it's not like barbarians get much better at hitting things. The rage damage goes up, but that's it. Yeah, and it's not... It's not like cantrips going up, you know, every six levels or whatever. And rage damage goes up very slowly. I mean, ninth level, it goes up to three. And then it takes till 16th level to get to plus four damage. Right. So that's fair. I think for the most part, except for getting more brutal critical dice, there's no barbarian feature in a multi-class. It's level 20 ability is is great, Um, but there's no features like in between like ninth level and 19th level that I'm like, oh, you need that for your barbarian for it to be effective in melee at, at those points. I mean, the path features usually... The 14th level ones are pretty good. I know there's a couple that aren't very impressive, but otherwise, I mean, the brutal critical second dice at 13th level, it's more damage, but it's not necessary. Relentless rage is where if you drop to zero HP, you can stay up as long as you make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. And then you only drop to one HP. The DC increases by five each time. So that's not like... It's not I mean, necessary. Solid, it is good. It but, is. But it's not like, yeah, if you don't get that all of a sudden, your barbarian's way falling behind. Like, you're still hitting as hard mm-hmm. as you can. Um, this will, of course, make the you more squishy because you're yeah. not getting D12s for the other half. So you're getting D6s. Ooh, that's painful. Which sucks. Yeah. And you're going to you- also be easier to hit because the barbarian's armor is based off stats. Yeah. So that's actually or important to talk about. Armor. I think medium armor would be the way to go for this build entirely because you're going to have to, if you try and use the Barbarian's unarmored defense, which comes on at second level, I believe, you would need to have, oh, is that first level? This is the first first level ability, sorry. That's 10 plus your dex plus your constitution modifier. I think realistically you can get your dex plus two pretty all right. You can get your constitution to 14 pretty easily. That would give you a 14 AC if you went with unarmored defense. If you just go with medium armor, you're going to be in a lot better of a place. You could at least mm-hmm. get 17. I think half half plate is medium armor. I can never remember. I think so, yeah. Or is it breastplate? Either way, um, 15 plus 2 gets you to 17 AC. You can still wear a shield if you're concerned about the, uh, the AC. There's nothing stopping right. you there. I always think Which of- you will be, because you dumped your con. Right. <laughs> and that means less damage, because you're not going to have your, your two-handed weapon, 
which also makes your brutal critical is a lot less interesting. So eh, it definitely I, I hurts. take the 17 AC. It's that's fine. That's not terrible. Yeah. Um, hope, hope your yeah, DM so, gives so, you some magic armor to be like, Oh, right. please you you're doing horribly. Here you go. Here's some more AC. <laughs> I, I would definitely go uh totem warrior route to go path of the bear. And get resistance to everything while raging to make up for that. Then all of a sudden getting the D6s instead of the D12 is like, and not being able to focus on con is not as big a deal. Sure. It helps a little bit at least. So yeah, you trade some survivability in melee combat for utility out of combat and flexibility in unique situations. Sure. Sure. And that's, that's fair. Uh, The... I guess there's there's probably like a a larger philosophical conversation about like why you're trying to do that because like should if if you're trying to be the barbarian and just like good in those situations it's okay to be bad in other situations that's like what makes a party necessary in D&D you're not supposed to be the spellcaster and the melee combatant but I don't know gishes are still characters that everybody loves to play so Mm-hmm. I'm not going to win that fight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have no issue of going for both because they're like a pure barbarian or pure fighter will outclass them in martial melee stuff or you know, ranged. Um, where a pure, pure sorcerer or wizard or any spellcaster will outclass them in that. It's just kind of taken a bit of both. Sure. And then I, I think it does open up to cool character concepts. Uh, I know, yes, you could do the flavor without multi-classing, but it's nice to have the mechanical benefits tied to it. The sorcerer who will lose control and when doing so cuts off their access to magic and just goes completely nuts on the battlefield or whatever situation they are in and fully lose themselves to their rage. And then maybe that's something they need to try and overcome. And depending on how it, their campaign goes, if they give more and more into that, they take more levels in Barbarian. If they learn to management more, take more in Sorcerer, kind of do it adaptively. Yeah, that makes sense. Though, I guess this taking levels in Sorcerer, how I see it, this is to, to add to your point, always seems like being able to control it more. Like a young sorcerer is like, I don't even know how I do magic. Sometimes I get scared and fireballs <laughs> pop out. Uh, compared right. to like a level 20 sorcerer is like, I have mastered this bloodline and I know why this is happening. <laughs> right. Uh, then, of course, there's the classic start out as a barbarian who gets access to magic they are not ready for. Yeah, and like they're they're not comfortable using it in battle, so most times they don't. But every once in a while, they they manage to get get something going with it and get a spell or two out. Maybe maybe that power grows. Maybe they also learn to tame it and get stronger down the sorcerer path. Or yeah, um, one just thing... reject it. Oh, would you have something to say, Will? I mean, <laughs> it'd be kind of crazy if there's like a barbarian subclass that covered that particular case the, well, the wild magic covered. barbarian yeah except they don't really cast spells that's it, it's it ends up it neither will this flavor. concept <laughs> what it's like they like a sorcerer barbarian also really won't cast that many spells <laughs> but yeah i'm not trying to be like at ultra negative but the reality is like it just you probably would be way better just going down that path of wild magic it's true, and from a flavor perspective, you are basically getting the same thing. Uh, you can add a little extra spice to it, because if you want to say that it's a bloodline instead of the wild magic aspect is usually granted, or you know, you're know you touched by whatever magic, and it makes you shoot lightning bolts when you rage, I mean, whatever. Um, right. But if you want to say, oh, well, it's actually because my family line is this type of blood and it wasn't discovered until X point or something, then you're not going to get all of that flavor out of the wild magic barbarian path. But you are going to have a lot more cohesive character. So there's that. Right. Any any fun in a wild magic barbarian and a wild magic sorcerer multi-class there's no overlap at all <laughs> yeah you definitely could just double down on that 
The wild, wild. Um, yeah. The wild, wild magic sorcerarian. <laughs> um, I know we when we talked about the wild magic barbarian, which I guess link there for the episode on Tasha's covering it, uh, we discussed how the biggest issue with the Wild Surge is a lot of them are situational. And when it is so random, like you you rage and you have this situation that you've now kind of been given. And a lot of times you can't really, you can't change whatever combat you're in to fit the thing that you get. So I guess it, it still isn't that like great of a class in my opinion. So the idea of then trying to like mix it with the wild magic sorcerer sounds really tough. And it's like, I get that the flavor is there, but it just, I don't know if it's really going to be worthwhile to do. Unless you somehow just like, I don't know. I I think there's, there's the, the one thing is the wild magic on the wild magic table. There is a specific thing. And I, it will take me forever to find it, but basically you just cast spells or is it like wild magic things happen like every single turn afterwards? Is it the double zeros? Is it a one? Yeah. If you roll a one or two, you roll on this table at the start of each of your turns for the next minute, ignoring results on a subsequent turn. Sure. Okay. Right. So like if you had a scenario where you like, you got that roll and you raged and you got like the, the bolts of lightning shooting out of your chest, like so much stuff is going to be happening and it's going to feel really (laughs) cool as you're just like, you've had that moment of like my magic has, has, I don't know. It seems very like narratively. It sounds really cool in that moment, Mm -hmm. but unless it is a big fight, it could just be you unleashing your magic on a bunch of CR one goblins that get absolutely destroyed. And then it never happens again because the chances of it are so low. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't build a character around that happening, but sure. It's neat. (laughs) (laughs) I would, I would build an entire character around that one moment and then yell at my DM. If it doesn't happen. (laughs) <laughs> for no reason it's a weird rules situation so let's say you you start out combat you cast a sorcerer spell and which ends up you know you roll the one on the d20 you trigger the wild magic surge and you roll a one or two so you keep rolling on this table every minute after but then the next turn or every turn after for a minute next turn you rage so you are now raging, and then say you get a 9 or 10. You cast Magic Missile as a 5th level spell. Oh. Would it still happen? Interesting. Is that a way to negate this? I would say rules is written. I don't believe it would, because it says you cast it. Says it says cast. Yeah, it uses the word cast, and then it's really clear in the Barbarian's uh, rules were raging. You cannot cast a spell or concentrate on one. Okay, so I get two things from that. One, uh, that kind of sucks because that would be that's like the point of casting wild magic surge or getting wild magic surge is to have those moments happen. Uh, but flavor wise, that fits in line with what you were talking about of like losing yourself in the rage, or maybe they find that the the sorcerer origins are frustrating and you know, difficult to deal with but when they go into this rage state it kind of calms it a little bit and it's like well I, I don't have to think about the magic when I'm just swinging my axe and there's a comfort to that so just sure being able to play up that narratively is is pretty cool um, though I would say as a DM I'd probably just let that be cast anyways like if somebody came yeah, to me with this kind of happens yeah yeah, don't take that away from them. This we're, right. we're stretching as is here. <laughs> uh, no, that's that's just for for the person who wants to do this. Sure, cast your How about fireball this? on yourself. Just go ham and create like a reflexive table that where your wild magic from barbarianness just triggers the sorcerer stuff. Meaning, <laughs> I was thinking, going to more like, detail. If you did, if you homebrew it. So you would homebrew like your barbarian wild magic. So you roll 2d8s, for instance. And if it's dubs, you roll on this sorcerer's table. In addition to what you already got. Yeah. 
Yeah, I could see that. Another thing that I was thinking was for the Tides of Chaos, the whole thing is that you can get like advantage on a roll or ability check or a spell save or like a saving throw. Well, mm. that anything, might... I think. Yeah, basically anything. I was thinking like if there'd be a way... Not if there's a way. There's of course a way, but like allowing the Tides of Chaos roll to be a re-roll on your barbarian wild magic table okay so it's obviously like a d8 instead of the d20 that's expected there but if since it would be very difficult to get this barbarian probably up to like level 10 where that becomes a thing that you could do i think it's 14 is it 14 yeah that's that's why we were so mad because that's the most fun thing on this list right oh yeah i get to choose and then no roll twice and choose right so like using your tides of chaos in order to choose it instead or again roll twice and choose from those two could be a way to do it um so yeah what we're what we're already saying like what 10 minutes into this episode (laughs) is like maybe if you really want to do this have your DM give you a bit of leeway because it's not broken. It's not overpowered. It it needs a little bit of a tune-up. Uh, right. <laughs> We're also at 25 minutes. We've been going longer than you think. I I figured the first 10 minutes was Will just eating pizza. We are just waiting for that. <laughs> uh, that's a joke for us. Sorry, people yeah. listening. So... There are some like obvious flavor overlaps beyond the wild magic and wild magic paths that you would <laughs> hope would work, and they don't. So the Barbarian has the Path of the Storm Herald, and then the Sorcerer has the Storm Sorcery Origins. They have zero reason to be in the same character. The Storm Sorcery Origin first level ability is that when they cast a spell, first level or higher, they can fly 10 feet without provoking opportunity attacks as a bonus action. So, like, none of that is going to be worthwhile for a barbarian. If for some reason you want to go with the storm aspect, which Storm Herald's not, like, a great subclass as it is, but I kind of like it. But if you want to go with that raging storm idea, just go storm Path of the Storm Herald and then wild magic for the sorcerer. Don't try and make those two mix. That's my suggestion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you really get nothing out of it. No, I mean, maybe if you can get up to six level, but even then, it's just, I don't know. I don't like the storm sorcery subclass. I wish I did. Yeah, because it's... That would be better multi-class with like a fighter or something like that, because... There are things in there where it sounds like you should be in melee range, like the uh, lightning and stuff erupts from you when you cast spells and damaging things within 10 feet and you become an immune to certain damage types, giving you the image of like the characters up in the fray. It's like, okay, Barbarian, except for all of these trigger on spell casts. So, yeah. Yeah, probably probably not the best bet. Um, from a, Again, from just flavor, and I guess we could talk about how well it would work or not. Path of the Beast and Draconic Bloodline. Oh, okay. Uh, during, yeah, during Path of the Beast, I think I even went as far to say it's like, it feels so similar to Totem Warrior. Why didn't they just make this like Path of the Dragon and make it like, it's really easy to, like all the things Path of the Beast gets where like they get their bite, their claws or their tail, climbing, jumping or swimming speed. It's like all of that could very easily be dragon flavor instead of beast flavor. Um, and so spin it a little bit that way. I see that. Interesting thing with Draconic Resilience, first level sorcerer ability if you go Draconic Bloodline, is the re- yeah Draconic Resilience. So one HP per level in that class. So nothing Ooh. crazy there, but yeah, you know, whatever. But then a better way to get AC, 13 plus dex. Oh, you wouldn't I know have to focus first, on Constitution. Exactly. Yeah, I know it feels like it's stepping on the toes of the unarmed defense, but which is 10 plus dex plus con and there's a really good chance your constitution's not gonna be plus three anyways not with this build no so it's like all right just take that then and then you can still be the unarmored raging barbarian who has just like no health takes until like level 15 (laughs) to to break triple digits (laughs) that's like that that it doesn't sound like you know just from a theory discussion like that would be a big deal but man, that lack of health is such a killer for me in this because with 
the inability to put anything into constitution or else you're negating some other stat or ignoring some other stat you're just you're gonna be so much squishier Mm -hmm. a d6 instead of a d12 having your constitution probably two ability mods lower than you normally would have had it all of these things are just like oh no that that sucks i don't want that significant amount of health very significant. yeah it it is a big difference and say the the chronic resilience i know you said this as dismissively in the first place but it's one hp for every level you go in the sorcerer class so a sorcerer gets a d6 the barbarian gets a d12 it does not make up for that (laughs) one one hp per level in sorcerer does not make up for that difference by a long shot yeah um Um, i will say your the flavor though is is spot on and the dragonborn race guess which ability mods they get plus two to strength plus one to charisma oh hey. nice there you go yeah it's kind of perfect um to help for with a the paladin <laughs> <laughs> it's not no 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 we're, that's what we're talking about this doesn't exist right now Pala, what <laughs> never heard of them i go barbarian sorcerer <laughs> So the form of the beast's whole thing is when they enter rage, they get to pick a special weapon, bite, claw, or tail. I'm just trying to think. Yeah, when you enter rage. Okay, so in the bite one is you you, know, you can make bite attack. You deal 1d8 piercing damage on a hit. And then you regain a number of hit points equal to your proficiency bonus, provided you are less than half of your hit points when you hit. A little boost to the lower health. Man, I always, I don't remember if we talked about this when we first discussed this class. I don't like the fact that it has to be less than half your HP. I I guess maybe that works fine for a full barbarian because (laughs) they can tank quite a lot. But in this case, that's like, eh. Right. Unless you only rage when you are at half HP. Could see that being a thing. Like you, you kind of hold back. Why? Because you're mainly sorcerer or you want a couple more levels into sorcerer and you just use your cantrips. And spells. I mean, you'd have spells, too. Yeah. Okay, you could play the, the raging, using the barbarian stuff as the, the desperate yeah. act. You try and keep it together. You're casting your spells. Things are going south. You run out of spell slots. You're low on health, whatever. You say, fuck it. You throw down your arcane focus, pull out a giant maul, and rage and rush in. And start biting people's legs. There you go. <laughs> it's something. It yeah, I mean, may- that could be fun. I think I would have fun playing that. Right, yeah. right. Like that that moment of like, you know, throwing down the focus, I guess, would be <laughs> kind of cool. Not as cool as throwing down a mall, but, you know. Now you're picking up the mall. Picking up you the mall. Throw That's- it down to pick it up. <laughs> it's a free action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's cool. I could see that. And you kind of, you know go into your beast form so it's it's a, like a transformation basically which I, I know was the entire point of the path of the beast is to have that transformative feel with your rage right. uh ancestral guardian lines up a lot with just anything sorcerer because sorcerers are about bloodlines mm-hmm. for the most part and like your origins and so maybe with ancestral guardian the ancestors you have that help you are you know, the, the the dragon in the past bloodline or the celestial entity for the divine soul or wh- whatever. And so they kind of manifest in the two ways. You have the innate magic powers from them being in your bloodline and then sort, sort of like the avatar in the last airbender. And then it's your past life or the past ancestry you can communicate with that physically does help you in battle. And then, right. You know, make them make, make like a character. And, and kind of back on to... Uh still in that line with the ancestral guardian uh but back to clockwork where i was thinking about that type of character and how how you would have a barbarian whose focus is law and order uh it's it's not like usually what i equate with a barbarian but i do like the idea of a like prim and proper gentle giant who's obsessed with rules being followed like maybe they come from like a a noble background and like their entire life is about like being taught you have to do things in this specific way and when they see things that go outside of that when they see chaos in any way it sets them off and they 
a rage. Uh, so I could see that also going with ancestral guardians. So it's mm-hmm. almost like a pull away from what you'd expect of the barbarian, where it's like, no, I just want to rage and smash stuff. It's like, I'm smashing stuff for a cause. And then you take two levels in paladins that you can smite. <laughs> Might as well at that point. <laughs> Honestly, no, I actually stand no, by it that. Would probably help this, it. this, if you take two levels in paladin and like one level in sorcerer, this becomes a better class than just sorcerer. With the barbarian, yes, base. yes. Okay. <laughs> if you turn this into a three-level multi-class, and it's already there, you've already three got the strength, yeah. you've already got the charisma. So if you're say, yeah. in for easy, a penny, in for a pound, do. at least now you can smite and use those spells <laughs> for something because you can smite while raging. You're not casting you anything. Right, 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 right. So, okay. Here's <laughs> here's a sneak peek into the the three multi class episodes that we're never doing. So stop asking us. I'm the, sorry, the guys. Barbarian sorcerer paladin. Barbarian sorcerer paladin is better than barbarian Don't say sorcerer. Never. We're running out of two way multi classes here, and we're not planning on like ending the show. So I know, but we're Don't, just, no never say never. We just have so many more of these episodes where we're like, this doesn't work. Well, <laughs> let's keep right. trying. Oh. Yes, no, I don't want to go through all of them. Uh, and just like highlighting some neat ones. Right. I could see doing some episodes doing that. But no, I'm not taking on the challenge like we did for the two-way multi-classes of every combination. Yeah. One big consideration, a lot of the new Sorcerer Origins, I, I think the two of them, Abermind and Clockwork, um, in Tasha's have the option of, you get like special spells like Psionic Spells or Clockwork Magic. And... Like there's a list to pick from and things like that, but when it says whenever you gain a sorcerer level, you replace one spell you gain from this feature with another spell the same level. It could be in this for clockwork abjuration or transmutation spell from sorcerer, warlock, or wizard. Oh, it opens it up. That is a good um, point. And then aberrant mind is divination or enchantment from sorcerer, warlock, or wizard. It's still pretty limited because of the school and level. I mean, because again, you're going to be. Yeah, pretty far down there, but that does open things up. Again, the sorcerers just don't, they don't get a lot of spells that are going to be worthwhile here. Uh, I think the only ones that I got were like, say, (laughs) sleep and jump. Both don't really help. But then even just for like damage spells, if you're just trying to get something on that first turn because you're too far away and you don't want to throw a javelin because javelins kind of suck. Magic Missile, Chaos Bolt, Chromatic Orb, Earth Tremor, and Ice Knife. All of them are fine. I mean, those are solid first level damage spells. But sure, being yeah. able to open that up to, you said Wizard, Abjuration, and what was the other one? Was it Evocation? It was Wizard, Warlock, or Sorcerer. And then if you're Clockwork, this is kind of one of those hard things to like figure it all out. If you're, sorry, if you're Aberrant Mind, Divination, or Enchantment spells... And if you are the clockwork soul, it is abjuration or transmutation. I like how you say this is hard, but that's literally filters you can set on D&D Beyond. Right. right. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so alarm, but that's already on there. Absorb elements is right, one. That's which, a reaction though, isn't it? Yeah. So if you're raging, you can't do it. Yeah, that's not great. Um, you could get detect magic, which is good for utility, something that you aren't getting as just sorcerer and that one's a right. divination again not in combat that's but the, otherwise there's yeah. no out of combat spells so we're getting something um shield is a reaction uh at second level we get arcane lock yeah mm-hmm. exciting there you go no yeah. <laughs> never been used in like our seven <laughs> years of gameplay <laughs> That's a DM spell. Yeah, so I mean, think just some some extra utility spells, which I that was my complaint earlier, is that you don't get any utility spells with this. So if you go Aberrant Mind or Clockwork, you can switch some out. That said, or- I remember us discussing that you can't do that on first level. It's when you gain a level, so you have to at least go two levels into Sorcerer to do that. Yeah, it says you can replace... <sighs> I remember having that discussion. I don't remember the... So that when, whenever you gain a sorcerer level, which is creating your character at level one or multi-classing into it, a level one is gaining a level. You can replace one spell you gained from this feature with another spell of the same level. I believe we... I would say you could do that right away. Uh, but... 
I don't remember. I, where we I don't. Re- yeah. Doesn't matter. I might be completely contradicting myself in that episode. So <laughs> I think knows, so. But. I'm not gonna. Wasn't gonna call you out. If you're but. a regular sorcerer, no. If you're a sorcerer barbarian, sure, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just let him. Uh, you know, just pick any spell. Any spell. That's that fixes this pretty well too. Just give him the list. Pick what you, you want. want. Wish. Take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No love yours. Needed. Uh, this hasn't been brought up, but we totally have to. The shadow magic sorcerer. As three levels into that, you can get darkness and cast darkness and see through darkness, but... Concentration. Concentration. Yes. So for anybody who was thinking about typing that up and saying, you guys totally didn't talk about the shadow magic sorcerer, that's because it still doesn't work. Yeah. I saw some... And you know what? It doesn't work. It costs less levels. Good, like, eh. so you say? can do this second level for Warlock. So this is three levels to get a feature that doesn't work when you can get the same thing that doesn't work with a warlock for two levels. <laughs> <laughs> and you can at least go Hexblade. Yeah, and then, you, then you're a warlock, Dude, what, so it's with fine. That? <laughs> What's that? What? Why would you go Hexblade? What would you do with that? Uh, it's cool. Yeah, all, I don't know. All the Hexblade stuff works with Barbarian. Why would you do it? I don't know. Literally, well, I, just I think for all the... the rage stuff requires strength. I know we, yes. we had this episode. I'm sure we talked about it all. But yes, but at least I, I don't think the Hexblade's curse requires you to use your charisma based attacks, and That's Hexblade o- yeah. allows you to use either charisma or your actual ability. It, yeah, it doesn't say you, when Anyways. you use this weapon, you have to use charisma. Right, but that it doesn't matter. It's still not great. It's just better than three levels into Shadow Magic. Yes, <laughs> and one level in. Gets you Eyes of the Dark, so you get dark vision out to 120 feet. Not really that great, but not horrible. It's okay. Yeah. And then Strength of the Grave, which is when damage reduces you to 1 H- 0 HP, you make a charisma saving throw, DC 5 plus damage taken. On a success, you drop to 1 HP instead. You can't use it if you're hit by radiant damage or a critical. And after a saving throw succeeds, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So you might live a little bit longer I, I don't know i could see that when it comes up it's helpful but that's not really a benefit to the barbarian sorcerer multi-class just a benefit to the shadow magic subclass right now the hound of ill omen though at six level that can be up it's as a bonus action you can spend three sorcery points to magically summon a hound of ill omen targets one creature, and that is not casting a spell. So officially, you can bring that out while raging and continue to have it out while raging. Its main benefit, though, is that, what is it? it creatures next Gives to it yeah, have disadvantage against from, your saving throws. From your spells. Yeah. yeah. Not, not all saving throws. Yeah. So it's not that worth it, but it's something right. that... It can make opportunity attacks, so it can kind of pin people down, but it's kind of <laughs> yeah if you want to be a barbarian and have a beast friend you should probably go ranger yes you need wisdom but you're still going to get more out of it right i mean strength dex and wisdom but yeah that's a rough one but the dex isn't that hard for barbarian normally no at least it's still a physical stat like that's right that's the expectation is that barbarians are like i've got 20 strength 20 dex, 20 con, and 6 int. <laughs> and then Aberrant Mind, I don't even like the flavor, to be honest. Like, not of just Aberrant Mind. I don't like the flavor of a barbarian going into Aberrant Mind. I I just don't get it. Like, I can't I can't mash those two together. I, I think that plays up well the in control versus the not in control and fighting internally about that. Yeah, that's kind of how I see like the the psychic stuff, the psionics, where it's like full mental control. You can manipulate the world, and that's your form of magic. But this person loses it sometimes and goes into a rage and gets cut off from all of that. It's, I mean, you could do that with any sorcerer's origin, but I do. I think that's, in my my opinion, that's how I would do that. I always forget the name of it. What's the Elithid's brain dog called again? 
intellect devour. devour. Okay, so that's that's what happens when the barbarian gets its brain eaten by an intellect devour, but then the barbarian like mentally rages against the intellect devour <laughs> and continues to house it in its brain, like not needing its old brain. The barbarian didn't need it. It wasn't <laughs> using it. Nah. So, now it just keeps the intellect devour and it gained one level of aberrant mind, which lets it cast some spells and speak telepathically to people. There sure. you go. That's <laughs> that'd be interesting. That's that's the origin I've got. Yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm tapped. Yeah. It, it, what's interesting here? We haven't even talked about the main sorcerer thing. Meta yeah, magic. we haven't because it's kind of worthless here. Entirely. I, mean, I, I guess in some senses you could argue. <laughs> you're since you'll be. I'm just laughing like, yeah, we're... we're, laughing. No, 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 I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing that we're 35, 40 minutes into a Sorcerer episode and we haven't brought up Meta Magic. Like, there's a reason for it, but sorry, keep going. Yeah, no, um... I can see the argument being made that since you're going to be casting spells less because of all of the raging, having Meta Magic for when you do to make them more powerful would be great. But a lot of the spells when that you are going to be casting i just don't think it really matters that much right you know i guess like i don't know actually there's a couple of things you might want to twin maybe and like again it it makes that first turn feel a little bit more effective so yeah okay there's some reason like maybe you want to heighten the spell but that's three sorcery points so that's hard to justify when you've only got three sorcery points at third level Right, to really make sure it lands, but that's one disadvantage on the same throw made against it. Right. Um, yeah, quick end to turn it from one action to a bonus action actually usually screws up your first turn because you need the bonus action to rage. And it's been made very, very clear, just in case anyone does bring it up, that the action and bonus action, like you cannot like upcast bonus action to use your whole action. They, they are separate <laughs> costs. I upcast my bonus action to rage twice. <laughs> Yeah, you know, subtle spell for out of combat utility. Sure. Sure. Or avoiding a counter spell. Um, empowered, I can see, where um, one source your point, you can do it after you do the damage roll. Uh, we could reroll non dumb or dice up to your charisma modifier. Yeah, I guess. Uh, just to soup up when, when you do use those damaging spells, like you really want them to hit hard. Like, you know, maybe you, you're going first and everything's grouped up and you get into big AoE off, you get your fireball off. And it's like, oh, there's a bunch of ones. Let me empower that. I think if I was going to make the poor decision to go three levels into Sorcerer, I would probably go with Subtle Spell and Twin Spell. I think those make the most sense. Not that the the other ones that you've mentioned don't have some reason. Just those are the ones that I would probably pick. Though Twin... Oh, no, sorry. Twin does work on Chromatic Orb. That's, That's what I was worried about is that it didn't. Yeah. Good. The day is saved. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things that are worth twinning, though, are concentration spells, buffs, and stuff like that. But so I guess you just kind of focus on the damage. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be a barbarian sorcerer, you probably do want to focus on the damage, right? Like, that seems more in line with the character, not of like, right. I want to help my party out with long held concentration spells. It's like, nah, I'm, right. I'm going to be doing as much damage as I possibly can in a short period of time. Right. Okay, subtle spell made me think of another character concept where they, they play up there the big dumb brute barbarian, but they actually do have spell casting and an understanding of the arcane, and they hide it from people and try and use that to, advan- to their advantage. Uh, make it just not this known thing, and so people try and treat them differently. Um, if someone's trying to get the better of them or whatever, capture them, they're going to just assume they can't cast spells. And so they don't take the extreme precautions you would take when trying to capture like a wizard or sorcerer or something like that. And then having subtle spell and you said, as you said, would be a good one to take could really a mechanical reason of how they could cast spells in front of people and still keep it hidden. Sure. That's awful. I, (laughs) why is that awful? (laughs) I just think, like, that's the, the character concept of subterfuges. Like, oh, you thought I was only a mediocre barbarian? I'm also a mediocre sorcerer. <laughs> I was going to say that if if I were to do that, and if I wanted to play that character, I think I'd still go for fighter. 
over That's Barbarian true. in that case uh, because Fighter obviously m- mashes a lot better because you can cast spells whenever you want, but also can be dumb. I mean, nobody would like right. look at that as like, oh, barbarians are the only stupid characters. You have to be a barbarian <laughs> for that, um, right? But no, that's 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 fine. I'm thank you for bringing that up, <laughs> Will. You're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> any any other character concepts? I mean, like even the mechanical aspect. Sure, it's not going to be great, but uh, is there like a natural way of this happening in game? I know I'm always pretty negative on the sorcerer for that. Could you think of a reason why a sorcerer would be drawn to the barbarian pathway? Like you've been playing for five months now as a sorcerer, you're level six, and then you multiclass into barbarian. Yeah. Uh, something like really tragic happens to you, and that's kind of how you manifest your anger and grief. Okay. Yeah. Like you, you, in a narrative way, you you rage, and I don't know, like maybe your wild magic, sure, and you kind of pop off with spells or with with your wild magic surge, and that in the future manifest in barbarian levels, allowing you to rage. Um, I could see that. And I mean, to yeah. throw another spin on it, maybe to get Will uh, interested in this, how would you make this in the big book of multiclassing? Like if you were to actually make these two have some cohesion, what would you want to see? Honestly, path of wild magic done more wildly. Okay. The barbarian is a wild class. Mm -hmm. The wild magic is supposed to be just nuts. Combined, it's actually less popping off, (laughs) you know, separate. (laughs) Right. So making this wild surge table just work. I I think the idea of you can't cast spells while you're raging combined with you aren't really casting the spell, the wild magic's getting out could be cool. Yeah. I'll definitely agree with that where mm-hmm. raging is almost opening up the channels and letting the wild magic flow more, not less. Okay. So you, you keep the wild magic barbarian kind of as is when you enter rage, you have your DA table. Here's a kind of middling beneficial effect, you know, no matter what it is. But then at the start of every round, while raging, you roll a D 20 on a one, you roll on the sorcerer wild magic table and whatever happens, happens. Including casting spells, because as, as you said, well, it's the wild magic getting out, you not casting. I mean, once per round, that would happen at least, it should, in theory, happen once an adventuring day at least. Maybe a couple mm-hmm. more times on a, a good day. Maybe not at all on a bad day. But that that could definitely be something. Yeah. I'd play test and let it. The, and let that reset Tides of Chaos for just kind of the nice boost. Because mm. it's... it's you know, rolling on the table, so. Yeah, that works. That works. Yeah, I could see that. Great. Okay, well, I feel better. Because that's that's a, a positive <laughs> conversation to end it on. And there's nothing oh, more fix. positive than Metallic Dice Games. Our dice affiliate. And if you want to receive 10% off your order, you can go to their website, MetallicDiceGames.com. And use the code MM10 to get 10% off your entire order. Doesn't matter if you spend $5 or if you spend $20,000. They will give you 10% off. And we will also get 10% of the proceeds. So go forth and spend $20,000 on dice. You are the master of your money. And you should spend it how you want to. On dice. (laughs) You You don't need a mortgage rent none of that you just build a house out of dice (laughs) i'm done maybe some resin (laughs) some resin too that's yeah that's actually dice in in resin so there's some stability other than that you're good (laughs) Uh, and as usual if you enjoyed what you saw make sure to like subscribe leave a comment all those things I'm sure if you made it this far, you've already done it, but we'll remind you anyways. And thank you as usual to our patrons, Jeff W., Joe P., Vincent M., Sentinel D20, 
uh, Isaac M, Star Shinobi, Adam A, Home Bakery, Ed G, Bob F, and Craig A. If you want to support us on the Patreon, you can get early access to episodes ranging from one to two days to sometimes a whole week early. Who knows? Usually it's one or two days. Uh, as well as some fun write-ups here and there. And you can message us and ask us to do episodes, and we can't say no. We have to do them because you asked on Patreon. I have not actually told Kevin that, so I probably shouldn't have said that out loud. I was going to say, do we want to commit to that? (laughs) (laughs) I don't think that's true. Nobody's asked for dumb stuff yet. Uh, Just monsters. If you have a monster to suggest, I'll listen to it there. Anyways, that's it. (laughs) So much rambling. Yeah, Yeah, as always. Thanks for watching. (laughs)